Hello everyone. Today we will be going over 2013 USAMO problem number 4. Here is the statement of the problem. Find all solutions to the following equation where x, y and z are greater than or equal to 1. So what I would like to begin with is to make to the following claim and prove it. And that would significantly simplify the statement and hence help us solve the problem efficiently. The claim is as follows. So for all A and B greater than or equal to 1, we claim that square root of A minus 1 plus square root of B minus 1 is less than or equal to square root of AB. Uh, let me go ahead and provide two separate proofs to this uh, beautiful result. Um, the first proof is a simple AMGM application. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. So that's the inequality we would like to prove. Let's go ahead and uh, square both sides of this uh, inequality. Uh, so we would like to prove if that inequality is actually true. So we can write an equivalent statement by just squaring both sides. So I can do that very efficiently here. A minus 1, B minus 1, less than or equal to AB. Then I will reorganize the terms, particularly the, uh, I would just want to leave on the left hand side the radical expression and everything else moved on to the right hand side. So therefore, I would have two times a minus 1, b minus 1, which is less than or equal to a, b, uh, minus a, minus b. And let me make this clever thing. Let's just keep the plus 1 separately still. And now I just realize it's possible to factorize this part over here. So therefore, that would be equal to a minus 1 times b minus 1 plus 1 and that is simply true because of AMGM. Obviously if you call this whole thing as your first term here u and this thing here let's call it v um, when you apply AMGM so you would have this is the arithmetic mean part we move over the two to the other side and we have our u times 1. So that's how you can interpret it. And obviously this is a true, huh? which is true by AMGM, inequality. So therefore, uh, that provides us a first proof. And by the way, just to clarify, the equality condition in AMGM happens when the two terms u and v are actually equal to each other. So therefore, Equality condition holds when a minus 1 times b minus 1 is actually equal to 1. So that would be a first proof. Let me go ahead and provide a second proof to this uh, nice result. And this time I will be making use of... Um, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, like in our previous uh, video here. So I'll call this the second proof. Let me just circle it as well. So what I will do, I will go ahead and um, focus on the left-hand side of our expression. And I will simply rewrite the left-hand side as such. So I'll just multiply both terms on the left-hand side of our inequality by square root 1. Um, and now, this is a clever move because I did multiply them in this particular order. And now I will go ahead and apply um, our Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here. I'll call this term as A2. And this term here, I will simply call it B2. So that term over here. So therefore, if you recall, applying AMGM, we would have the square root of A1 squared. Well, A1 is just square root A minus 1. So therefore, it must be A minus 1. 
plus square root a uh, so, so plus square a2 square which is just one so therefore you would have a minus one plus one times b um one plus um b minus one and obviously that would be simply equivalent to a minus a times square root a times b by cauchy schwartz by cauchy schwartz inequality so that's a beautiful result again we should be worried about the equality condition here and equality holds so that's tricky so most people would be ignorant about the um, equality condition under the cauchy schwartz inequality it turns out it will hold when a1 over b1 is actually equal to a2 over b2 or you can write it as a1 over a2 is equal to b1 over b2 let's write that manifestation i guess equality holds uh, when um so a1 over a2 is just square root a minus 1 divided by square root 1 and that thing being equal to square root 1 over square root b uh, minus 1 so doing cross product and we just realize that we get back at this very condition so that's our equality condition it turns out that would be a critical a crucial um, element in the solution of this uh, problem okay so um, we are done with the first step so let me move on to my next slide here so now that I have this key lemma I can go ahead and apply it uh, 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 twice uh, let me um, just remind you one more time of our lemma so we just proved that uh, our claim here so we just had that for all a b greater than or equal to one we just proved that square root a minus one plus square root b minus one is less than or equal to square root a b let's go ahead and apply it actually to the right hand side of our equality here so let's go on so uh, let me just say apply the claim on right hand side twice and in, in, in a special order as you will see next um, but before I do actually I will need a, a an assumption so let me just uh, squeeze in that assumption because I have all these uh, numbers X Y Z I already know they are greater than or equal to 1 but I can without loss of generality let's assume um, X is the least of these two numbers so that will huh? that will be important for me if that's the case then I exactly know what I'm the answer to the left hand side obviously um, each of these terms will be able to I mean XYZ is the same in each term and all you do is you add an X a Y or a Z if that's the case if X is less than or equal to Y and Z it must be that the minimum of these three terms is this very first one so that's uh, so I should have an eye on this expression right here okay let's go back to applying the claim twice to the right hand side so I have square root a uh, x minus 1 plus square root y minus 1 plus square root z minus 1 I will first apply my claim to these last two terms so therefore that would be less than or equal to square root a x minus 1 plus square root yz now in order to apply the um, claim uh, or the lemma if you will one more time I will make the following trick I will rewrite yz as plus one minus one so therefore that's my term uh, okay so therefore applying the lemma one more time that would be less than or equal to now I will be able to say that would be x times 1 plus yz or yz plus 1 1 plus yz and I'm actually um, I have the result that I was seeking in fact what I just realized that, that what we really need to prove is to figure out the equality condition because I have an inequality here all I care for is when this inequality holds as an actual equality and I just investigated 
this uh, very well in this previous, uh, when I proved the, the lemma here, we just observed that equality holds, equality holds under the conditions when a minus 1 times b minus 1 is actually equal to 1. So that's the equality condition. Now I can go ahead and apply the equality condition twice. Apparently, we need to make sure the equality condition holds here and here. Uh, notice the conjunction here is and they must both hold as equality for the left hand well the right hand side of our equation here the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side here so both should hold as equality in the first one i applied the claim on these two terms the term two uh, the second and the third term so it must be the case that uh, um, so the first condition i have here is that y minus 1 times um, z minus 1 that would be equal to 1 so that's our first condition here and our second condition um, let me go ahead and write it down over here um, so this, this this one is a little bit trickier so we have this whole thing huh? so x minus 1 times yz huh? so after subtracting so I would have um, um, x minus 1 times yz is actually equal to 1. Now that I have these um, two conditions, it is time to go ahead and find the solutions x, y, and z that would satisfy um, the constraint, this condition, this, equi this equality in the problem. So what I will do is I will find all the solutions as a parametrization and for that let z be equal to let me call it as t that's my parametrization here so we will go ahead and so if you substitute this into the, our first condition you can immediately find the value for y so that would be 1 over t minus 1 then i'm moving the plus 1 to the right hand side um so therefore it would give us uh, the expression t over uh, t minus 1 and similarly once we have the z and the y represented uh, I mean presented in, in the form as a function of t's we can substitute them into here to get the value for x as well so x would come out as um, t squared plus t um, plus 1 all over um, t squared um, I believe this one should be should have been a minus actually so let's go ahead and correct that mistake here so so we have our parameterization so let's just go ahead and uh, just to be on the safe side uh, let's make sure that it is the fact it's in fact true that um, x is the less than or equal to y and z so we still need to confirm that so let's write that down so let's confirm uh, x is actually less than or equal to yz so confirm that this parameterization um, do not violate this condition here so um, so all we will have to do is compare this term here with uh, what we got for y and z obviously um, um, the first case um, well both cases would reduce to some trivial inequalities so for instance if we compare x and z, uh, let's say, huh? so x um, less than or equal to z uh, is equivalent of saying that, um, um, let's just write it like that, I guess, so t squared plus um, t minus 1 all over t squared is less than or equal to um, t. And guess what so you just do a cross product here rewrite it and then factorize this expression so it is um, you would get the, the, the following expression which is obviously true because um, so obviously t is greater than or equal to 1 it's a given condition in the problem t is equal to z and z was greater than or equal to 1 so this side is definitely greater than or equal to 0 and obviously for that same reason t squared minus 1 will also be greater than um, oh, sorry, uh, greater than or um, 
equal to zero as well. So um, in a similar way, we can also have a look at the case when x is less than or equal to y to confirm that if it's true or not. All I do is, again, I substitute the values for x and y into their uh, uh, the corresponding uh, locations. So like this, huh? so the left-hand side here is x and the right-hand side here is y after the parameterization. And guess what? So this also simplifies to a trivial inequality 2t um, is greater than or equal to 1, which is obviously tri true because t itself is greater than or equal to 1. So we have just confirmed that x, so this parameterization does not violate this condition here. So therefore, all solutions uh, are of the, um, so let's write that down, so all solutions are of the form, well, obviously the solutions for x, y, z are actually a, a permutation, huh? permutations of the following. And then we, we also have t over t um, minus 1. And finally, um, for z, I believe we, we just, that would be our uh, final uh, result. So that proves uh, this problem. Hope to see you in our next video.